Welcome back everyone, it is Matimus and thank you so much for joining me on today's video. We are discussing military aviation again and this bird has some ass. She's powering a lot of punch to the rear with that thick old booty and she is an amazing fighter aircraft of the NATO Armed Forces and is still today serving in the skies. Yes folks, you guessed it, we are talking about the Panavia Tornado and what a beautiful aircraft this is. Serving a long-standing career in the NATO Armed Forces, we really do need to discuss the origins of this aircraft before we go any further into its specifications and details. So, the Panavia Aircraft is a multinational company established in 1968 by the British BAC or British Aircraft Corporation. Also the German MBB and the Italian Fiat Avzione and the Dutch VFW Fokker. The involved companies had a mutual agreement resulting in a joint venture project of a new fighter-bomber aircraft. Initially, two versions were planned, the single-seat Panavia 100 for Germany and Italy, as well as the twin-seat Panavia 200 for Great Britain and the German Navy Air Force. In a similar arrangement, development of the Tornado's turbofans was undertaken by three partners of the MCRA, or Multi-Role Combat Aircraft Project, Rolls-Royce, German MTU and Fiat. Shortly afterwards, the Netherlands left the project. The design took a long time to develop, since the aircraft's performance was to meet particularly high standards, mainly expected of a modern combat aircraft in the Cold War era. The experiences of Vietnam and the Afghan wars led the engineers and designers alike to the conclusion that the electronically advanced avionics were very demanding of a two-member crew, hence the single-seat Panavia 100 project was dropped. The prototype was first flew on the 14th of August 1974. The first flight test proved very satisfactory. The new design also passed the weapons handling trials as well as the speed tests, during which the P-01 prototype had reached Mach 2. The prototypes P-01 through P-12 were further tested until 1979. The prototypes designated P-13, 14 and 15 served as blueprints for each of the cooperative nation's own serial production of the aircraft. As the aircraft's name Tornado was commonly accepted, the mass production commenced in 1979. Deliveries to combat units followed in the spring of 1980. Overall, the Royal Air Force was issued 229 Tornadoes in the IDS package, or Interdictor Strike Variant, the GR1 and the GR1 Alpha. Germany ordered 324, including 112 for their Navy Air Force, and the Italians also ordered 100 of them. A further 48 aircraft were purchased by the Saudi Arabians, while 8 found their way to Oman. Tornado went through its baptism of fire during the first war in Iraq in January 1991. The aircraft was also deployed in numbers during the conflict in Bosnia and the second war in the Persian Gulf in 2002. The aircraft proved its worth as a tactical support machine, capable of engaging and destroying targets with extremely high accuracy and with massive payloads. The Tornado's high terrain following radar allows for a hands-off stealthy approach to a target while flying at extremely low level high speeds. Suitably upgraded and overhauled, the Tornadoes are expected to remain in service in the first line until 2020, and we are already starting to see multiple variants being taken out of service, especially with the Royal Air Force, with apparent replacements at 2021. But, I mean, let's be honest here folks, I think Tornado is going to be coming out of service a lot sooner than that. The GR-1 of the Royal Air Force is capable of carrying a wide range of armaments, including conventional and anti-airfield bombs, laser-guided bombs, air-to-ground rockets and anti-radar missiles. During the 1991 Gulf War, the Tornado GR-1 flew over 1,500 operational sorties against many different airfields, air defence sites and bridges. Six aircraft were lost in low-level missions. The Tornado is possibly one of the most flexible multi-mission aircraft in history. Designed as a strike aircraft, it can also perform air defence, anti-shipping and reconnaissance missions with ease. It was a compact yet highly complicated aircraft overall, and the first European production design to employ the variable geometry wings. The wings are extremely complicated in their own design, and they're designed around a number of high lift technologies that enable it to become airborne more quickly, such as the shorter runways that were pretty much demanded of it in their specifications when it was in the Cold War environment. The Tornado utilises a fly-by-wire technology which for its day was extremely sophisticated and advanced. Along with a navigation attack radar that combined search, ground mapping and terrain following capabilities. 
Around 900 tornadoes have been built and acquired by the manufacturing nations since the 1980s. She is equipped with an advanced sensor and defensive aid suite for low level, deep penetration missions in all weather by day and by night. The aircraft is fitted with two 25mm cannons on each side of the fuselage. The aircraft is equipped with a wide range of weapons for close air support and interdiction. The aircraft is typically equipped with an iron set of bombs, cluster bombs and laser guided bombs. In a defensive suppression role it is equipped with anti-radar missiles. It can in-flight refuel which makes it a very important capability when going on long strike missions. The German Air Force Tornado aircraft will be armed with the Iris T infrared guided air to air missile being developed by BGT. The Tornado multi role aircraft is operational in five different forms the Tornado GR 1 interdictor strike aircraft for close air support, counter air attack and defensive suppression, the GR 1 Alpha tactical reconnaissance aircraft, the Tornado GR 1B long range maritime attack aircraft, and the Tornado F 3 long range air defense fighter. The GR4 is a midlife update of the GR1. More than 140 of the Royal Air Force GR1 tornadoes were upgraded to the Tornado GR4 configuration under the RAF Tornado Midlife Update program. The first entered service in 1998 and the GR4 received operational clearance in April 2001. The upgrade into the GR4 package was a huge change for this aircraft including new digital avionics a new included GPS system and upgraded inertial navigation systems along with new weapon programming units allowing it to utilize some of the more updated and modern weapon systems available for NATO around the world. The BA systems TIALD or thermal imaging laser designated pod which provides high accuracy of autonomous guidance for laser guided weapons was also integrated on the upgrading aircraft. From February 2007 a number of GR4 aircraft were operating in Iraq were fitted with the Rafael Lightning 3 targeting pod allowing it to engage and locate targets very very easily. The Tornado GR1B is a maritime attack aircraft. It was designed for the Royal Air Force to engage ships at long distance. Equipped with up to 4 Sea Eagle anti-ship missiles it can strike at a distance of up to 400 miles from base and is able to launch with missiles at a very long standoff range. The Tornado F3 Air Defense variant or ADV is basically armed with short range and medium range air to air missiles. A typical weapons payload would include 4 Sidewinder short range missiles and 4 Skyflash medium range missiles. The Tornado F3 were the first aircraft to be fitted with the short range MBDA ASRAM air to air missile which entered service in January 2001 and was declared operationally ready in September 2002. However, as most of you are well aware, the Tornado was most famous for its long range bombing missions and strike runs. The fact of the matter is this aircraft can carry a lot of ordnance under those beautiful swept wings and when it came to engaging large ground forces or even airfields, this thing was engaging targets with impeccable accuracy and a huge amount of firepower. The incredible thing about the Tornado was the variable geometry of that swing wing enabling a very high speed at low level while maintaining extremely good handling at low speeds. Low speed capability was essential for the use of makeshift runways at the same time but for the most part dropping that massive amount of ordnance as quickly as possible and getting out of there as quickly as possible was its key attribute and that was what really set this aircraft aside when it came to bombing missions which to be honest was the main purpose of this aircraft overall. Yes it was rolled in other different variants but we're seeing even today that the tornado is still running at that bombing role it's not the you know the Eurofighter Typhoons that are primarily doing the bombing missions. It is these beautiful aircraft and from a personal standpoint I can really take my hat off to this aircraft in respect because it did serve alongside me in Afghanistan providing support to me in Helmand province. Yes they loaded these things to the nines with as much ordnance as they could possibly get and do low flying bomb running missions on Taliban positions and to be honest having that kind of firepower on your shoulders is something that really helps you sleep better at night or go out on patrol knowing you have that close air support. Of course they had a little bit of a flight time to get from uh, you know Kandahar Air Force Base but these things pack a powerful punch in terms of uh, not only firepower but effectability of getting there very quickly with those two beautiful engines punching a lot of thrust out. Um, I must admit I am very proud to be part of a country that owned and still operates the Tornado aircraft for the fact that it's not only served very well in you know Afghanistan along with me but the Iraq war you know you see a lot of the footage I remember when I was a boy watching TV and you'd watch the footage of the Iraq war uh, you know the first Gulf War and you'd see 
um, all this footage of these bombers flying in low, you know, F-16s, F-15s, all these different, you know, strike packages coming in and engaging, you know, Iraqi targets. And I always used to see the tornado. I was like, wow, that's a beefy jet. I mean, the F-16, yeah, she's a beautiful aircraft. She took the spotlight, I think, primarily in, you know, the Gulf War. However, the tornado, I think, for me, in a British standpoint, takes the secondary place in, in you know, firepower in that particular war. So, a lot of respect for this aircraft. And I think many of you will agree. Now, I know I've primarily focused on the, you know, British side of the aircraft being in the Royal Air Force. Uh, that's just because that's what I relate to the most. And I know there's other nations that have their own uh, variations of this aircraft. But, you know, I'm going to relate to my own other than, you know, talking about a German aircraft if I'm British primarily. So I apologize if you're a little offended by that. But you shouldn't be. You should just be proud of this aircraft being a part of your nation and has served. Overall, folks, I am very impressed with the Tornado. And I'm sure many of you will agree with me here that it has served its time very, very well. Unfortunately, it is coming to the, le you know, the end of its life expectancy. And it's going to be slowly retired out of the Royal Air Force to be replaced with the Eurofighter Typhoon and the F-35. But, of course, my overall opinion on this aircraft is it is amazing. I'm just very proud to know that it has served my country and, you know, it really has a lot of key attributes that make it a very powerful, dominant, multi-role fighter for countries around the world. We know of those two beautiful, powerful engines pushing out that thrust, getting that heavy beast, and she has a thick old booty on her, up in the sky with all that ordnance to engage targets. And, you know, having that power is very important. A lot of people are very upset with the single engine F-35 coming into play. A lot of fighter pilots, of course, like to have that dual engine capability to support it when it goes into a dangerous low flying, you know, close air support run in case they lose an engine. You know, flameouts happen, uh, different tactical uh, situations can happen that really cause a major detrimental effect to your aircraft if you lose one engine. And if you only have one engine on your aircraft, that's going to make pilots a little nervous. So, Tornado has always ticked the box when it comes to providing that thrust and that firepower and good for it. And, you know, for me, its primary purpose is to be a bomber. I always see it as a bomber. I've never seen it as a fighter aircraft, as an air superiority fighter aircraft. It was never purposed for that in my eyes. Of course, though, it does have the capability to do so, but in reality though it's just a bomber it's designed to have a heavy payload to engage long-range targets uh, and even take out you know uh, surface to air uh, installations to allow for other strike packages and other aircraft to come in and do even more heavier bombing runs so very very proud of this aircraft very happy to see that it's done very well in its career and also sad to see it eventually go folks i would love to hear your opinion on this gorgeous aircraft let me know in the comments section below um, if anything that I may have potentially got wrong or you wish to add. I know I make mistakes and I try my best to outsource and get sources of information as, as true and accurate as I can. But of course, I do make mistakes and I do appreciate every single one of you correcting me of those mistakes. But let me know what you think uh, personally of this aircraft and maybe you've served with it or served alongside it or whatever else uh, experience you've had with it. I'd love to hear them. Um, if you wish to support my channel, folks, I'd really appreciate you go check out my Patreon account. It would mean a lot to me, being this is military content. Uh, I tend to be hit down by YouTube quite a bit. So, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, folks, and have a wonderful day. Hats off to the Tornado. What a beautiful aircraft. All the best. Bye-bye.